new technology, new innovation, a revived economy, and a new political landscape. Do you know which way the current is flowing? Attendees here at the AEM Annual Conference are getting some answers. Hi everyone, I'm Ed Hyland, and we're here in beautiful Miami, Florida, where hundreds of industry professionals are soaking up some sun and learning about the next wave of changes set to hit the equipment manufacturing industry. You are not just the makers of machines, you are in fact the makers of life. You are the excavators of energy, the erectors of industry. You are the harvesters of agriculture, the innovators of infrastructure. You are the ones who shape what our futures will be like. And every day along the way, you are also building our quality of life. Inspirational words help kick off AEM's annual conference where attendees are fired up to learn about new technology, make new connections, and discuss where the equipment manufacturing industry is headed. Information is key and an integral part of staying ahead of the tide is education. Conference attendees spent the morning hearing from experts about how to grow the future workforce and navigate technological change. Today's lack of skilled workers is challenging manufacturers to rethink how they will grow. During a session on economic growth presented by Trimble and SketchUp, Mark Hatch, Derek Woodgate and Jeremy Bout unveiled key strategies manufacturers can apply to their companies. The maker movement, for example, holds great promise for manufacturing and Mark Hatch showed attendees how to take advantage. The cost of developing your initial prototype has dropped by 98% over the last decade. And that fundamentally changes the calculus for deciding whether to start a company. It fundamentally changes how innovation can happen within inside of large companies. And it can have an enormous impact on a community as well as a company as a result. While Bout focused on how leaders can engage the next generation of equipment manufacturers. They have to get involved. They have to be a leader in their community. They have to engage with the local CTE teachers. They've got to talk to the local manufacturing program. They have to open their doors for things like manufacturing day. You cannot expect someone else to solve the, the workforce development challenge. The skills gap that we're hearing about, that's not someone else's problem. That's, you are part of the solution and get involved. Woodgate believes our industry's future depends on intelligent construction, upskilling in the workforce to adapt to technology, and what he calls the road beyond. How is the road way itself changing? What's this new connection between um, the, the, the driver, the vehicle, and the roadway? How can the roadway be seen as not just a load of asphalt or concrete, but something that's much more meaningful to our lives and brings new dimensions? And I think that's the type of areas that these emerging technologies are going to impact. On par with knowing how to grow your company is navigating the changing technological climate. Entrepreneur Scott Klosowski led a fascinating workshop about having a vision for the technological future. Well, there's a lot to fear with technology. If you get on the wrong side of the tools and you don't make the proper investments, they'll put you out. They'll, they'll, it'll be a door closer, as we say. Uh, now, on the other side, there's huge opportunity. So, so there's a lot of upside, and so you know, I don't think it's either or, fear or be excited. I think that you better be both. You better be paranoid about what it can do to your business, and I think you then you also should be excited about the opportunities. But you should not be naive. A lot of it is thinking about what you can do gradually, but in a very short amount of time without having to jar your entire organization into that much change. But all of it is very inspiring. Uh, very excited to take it back to the organization and start talking about it. An important part of the annual conference is the AEM business meeting. This is the time when board leaders review the year and share highlights and financials. New board members were elected and AEM President Dennis Slater shared his priorities for 2016. 2016 is a big year for us. I think for, for the first time here we're going to go out there and be part of these campaigns. We're going to get our message about pro-manufacturing and pro-industry out there to the candidates but also the public. But it's not all business here at AEM's annual conference. Leaders are spending plenty of time networking, sharing ideas, and recognizing their peers at the Pillar of the Industry Award Ceremony. What better way to network than learning together with your peers at places like the Tech Bar, where you can find out about the latest products in the market and even put them to use. While trying out the latest tech certainly is fun, attendees are also putting their bartending skills to the test, perfecting the art of the mojito. <laughs> 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 so 
setting is gorgeous, the breeze. Met some wonderful women and men um, from all over the country. So it's been great for personal and, and business. It's back to business with some of the pressing issues facing the industry, like how drones and other technologies are disrupting and changing the industry. First off, the technology will be used a lot for many applications that are of interest to the people who are members of this group. Um, it can be used for three-dimensional modeling, it can be used for looking at crops, it can be used for looking at wildlife and habitat. One interesting thing I've written notes on is to try to have a, a new technology section in our budget. In the job side of the future, we're hoping to have a drone on each project to be able to monitor them constantly, every day. The day ended with none other than a grand celebration at the AEM PAC Gala Dinner and Fundraising Auction held at the beautiful Breeza on the Bay overlooking Biscayne Bay. Each year, AEM PAC empowers AEM staff in Washington to build relationships with members of Congress. The gala allows AEM to recognize those lawmakers who act as allies for the industry. As we prepare for another day of networking and learning here at the AEM Annual Conference, we leave you now with some of the sights and sounds from the gala dinner and fundraising auction. Don't forget to follow all the action here at the AEM Annual Conference by using social media and the hashtag AEM Annual. For AEM, I'm Ed Hyland. Thanks for watching AEM TV.